Hello, welcome to another Impact Lounge Adam and Roe show. I'm Adam. Roe, are you out there? Yes, I'm here. How are you doing, Adam? Yeah, fantastic. Uh, it's been a slow week on the old news front this week with regards to Impact. Uh, but uh, yeah, it's kind of be to expected. You know, it's coming up towards the end of the year. Bound for Glory buzz has now subsided a little bit. Some great programming still going out, but obviously at the wrong time of those kind of things. But we'll dive into that in a second. Before we start, though, just want to remind you, if it's your first time stopping by, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you haven't already hit it, but you're a long-term listener, then why haven't you hit it? Please do so. Another thing is, folks, if you're listening, give us a thumbs up or a thumbs down. We really don't mind. All interaction helps us on our SEO rankings. Those kind of things gets us higher on the playlists on YouTube, suggested videos, all those kind of things, all the good stuff that makes our channel grow. Uh, talking of growing, last week we talked about uh, trying to get Billy Corgan on. Still uh, very keen to try to make that happen. So if you're not following us on Twitter, make sure you do follow and put in the hashtag get Billy on and copy in uh, Billy Corgan to the, to the tweets that I do. Retweet them, message him, whatever it is. Let's get him on this show in the future because I would very much like that. Um, I will read out our Twitter handle in a second. We'll cover that uh, in a little while. Before we do that, though, also want to give a shout out to uh, Trent and Kyle, who are now doing the Impact Reviews. Uh, great show. Very different to what Rowan and I used to do, but a lot of fun. They, they've got someone specializing in the knockout stuff. They have a top five list. Really good stuff. A little bit longer than our show used to be, but make sure you do tune in and give them all the support that you've been giving us guys over here as well. Um, final thing I wanted to touch on was that, um, yeah, the, the the Twitter handle. So uh, you can follow me on Twitter at V2AdamIL. So V, the letter, number two, Adam, and then IL for Impact Lounge. I might have to change that because uh, not many of you are following me at the moment. So make sure, even if you haven't been on Twitter before, go on, give it a go. Log on. Follow us. You can be, I could be your first follow. And uh, follow uh, Ro as well. Ro, what's your Twitter handle? RT Great underscore. There we go. And, uh, yeah, we do get involved uh, in a lot of chat with other wrestlers and those kind of things. Uh, also, you know, all the content that we have that's out there, make sure you are tuning in. We're going to be hopefully doing a few more interviews coming up in the coming weeks. Uh, hopefully Billy Corgan, although I have had no word from him so far. Um, but, yeah, just make sure you check out all the content on the channel because there is some really good stuff on there. All right, so we start off, as always, with the weekly trivia question. And Ro is going to give us the answer to last week's, and he's also going to set this one. So over to you, Ro. Yes, the correct answer was Rosemary. And the first person that I at least spotted who got it right was Matthew Truman. Um, if you guys remember, the two innovative matches she was part of were the Red Wedding, which obviously didn't happen, and then the Demon Dance, which did happen. Also, she was romantically involved with Bram and ended up kidnapping him, which was their way of writing him off a of TV. And finally, at Slammiversary, I want to say last year's Slammiversary, she lost to Sienna, the Knockouts Championship, when she went for the Mist. Sienna blocked it put it in her face and then ended up making her tap out. So congratulations to Matthew Truman. Well done, Matthew. So, so this week's is another toughie, but uh, let's go for it, Ro. What we got? All righty. Okay. I'm a current impact star. That's won every title under the TNA umbrella. Um, you can uh, accept the, the mid card titles. So I'm talking about the world championship, the X division championship and tag team championship. Okay. I'm also a wrestler who benefited the most from the partnerships that the company had uh, about a year ago. And then finally, two of my moves with one being a playoff of a movie and the other being a playoff of a U.S. historical moment. Who am I? So there you go. Um, it's quite a tough one, as always, when Rose sets them, not like the easy crap that I set you. So uh, leave us a comment in the YouTube section and we do read through them. We get a lot of guys who are regular listeners and are now commenting on on the channel. So that's great to see. You know, if we if we talked about all of our regular listeners, then uh, we'd be here all the time. Um, you know, we, we, we just wouldn't have any time to talk about anything else. So uh, if we don't read out your name ever, it, either as a trivia answer or one of your questions, don't get upset. We do like having your, your comments and we do read each and every single one of them. Uh, so, yeah, Ro, uh, I think that you wanted to cover something. And was there anything in the comments this week that you wanted to touch on? Yeah, we'll just run through briefly just some of the responses. 
Uh, the first one from Matthew Truman uh, talking about the top five guys he'd like to see Johnny Impact face. Pentagon Jr., Sammy Callahan, Killer Cross, Trevor Lee. Um, you know, a lot of you guys, I appreciate a lot of you guys' list. It seems like a lot of people, for the most part, we all kind of have universally the same people that we want to see. Like Killer Cross was a big popular one who's hap who happens to be getting a shot uh, this upcoming week. And we'll, we'll dive into that. Also, um, the J-Rock freak, he, I guess he was in agreement with me about the Austin Aries, you know, whether it's a work or it's just a shoot, you know, what's the benefit? Um, you know, and I know some people are fans of his, and I don't, in, in no way I'm saying that I dislike Austin Aries. I just kind of think with the whole angle now, I think the steam has kind of died down a little bit. So I think him coming back, you know, I just don't see what he can bring stemming off of what happened at Bound for Glory. And then uh, finally, um, this one from D D Stiller 85 he was just talking about how he doesn't think bringing a mid-card title would be any good because they failed to book the X division. And I believe that's true. But then, too, I just think once again, if we you know beat this like a dead horse with the X division title, if that's going to be your only mid-card, it limits a lot of people because a lot of people can't work that style as much as they praise it being that there's no weight limits. The X Division is safe to say is just a high flying division, and how many people that are non cruiserweights can work that high flyer style outside of Brian Cage? I mean, you know, you see KM do a couple of dives, but there's not too many heavyweights that can work that style. So, I mean, some others I've seen too do believe a mid card belt would be fine if they commit to it, and obviously they need to, you know, commit to booking the X Division better. But thanks for everyone's comments. Uh, yeah, uh, just, just a couple of comments I wanted to highlight as well. Well, first of all, one of them is a comment. It's, it's not on the actual YouTube channel, but listening to, to Kent, uh, sorry, Kent, uh, Trent and Carl, uh, they call our fans the loungers. So, yeah, I, I like that one. I think I'm going to refer to you guys as loungers from now on as well, if you comment. So, so loungers, thanks for your comment. But um, nothing I wanted to pick up on this one, but I just wanted to, to highlight Lee Putlin, Putlon, something like that, uh, who comments each and every week, always interacts with us. Great to have a fan like you, Lee. Uh, nothing we really want to answer this week, but if any of you listeners see Lee commenting, make sure you, you give him a shout out as well and answer his question because he is a big fan of the show. The other one I wanted to was Whoopsie. Uh, he uh, he wanted to, to to see what I thought of that Starship Pain Against Phoenix. Looked like it hurt. Yeah, it, it certainly did. So yeah, thanks for, for, for reminding me how much I dislike uh, Johnny Impact and his moveset usually, but I did go back and look at that. So thanks for highlighting that one. Cheers, Whoopsie. Right. Okay. So, so this week, let's get into the news. And there's, there's a couple of things I want to to touch on. Some very quick stories before we get into our main one. First of all, I wanted to congratulate well my, myself and also uh, Brooke Tessmacher for having our joint baby. Um, we, we're very pleased to welcome a new baby into the world. Uh, no, I'm only joking. Obviously, I'm not the father. I just wish I was. Um, well done, Brooke. Uh, welcomed. I think it's her second baby into the world, isn't it, Ro? I, I believe. Yeah. So uh, she had. Uh, she had a baby, and I don't think she's going to be back in Impact anytime soon. Talking of other people not back in Impact, uh, there was uh, some some commentary this week from Sienna, who I, I personally would like to see come back. And I'll ask you in a second row what you thought of this. But the good thing is, is that it does look like she she you know she obviously had a health scare. She left her contract expired, those kind of things. But uh, as she put it in her own words, she left on really good terms with them. So even if her, her career path doesn't work out at WWE. I hope someday we will see Sienna back. And and for me, she was always a very strange one, Ro, in that I thought she was immensely talented, but she never really seemed to connect with the crowd to me. You know, I liked her character. Uh, I liked her wrestling style, all these kind of things. She was very solid in the ring. and But she never really seemed to to get much of a reaction. Not in the same way Rosemary does, not in the same way Ali does, not in the same way Sue Young or Tessa or Tyre do. Uh, and, and I just don't understand why. But I, I would certainly welcome her back into the, the knockout division. How about yourself? What are your thoughts on, on Sienna there? I think with her, what they always did was they always kind of put her in a position where she was like that bodyguard. You know, you think about a lot of the time when they had a Maria and she was around Maria. She always served as a bodyguard. With that said, I think her coming back, I wouldn't mind it at all. I thought, you know, she brought something different being one of the larger, and I mean in height, as far as knockouts and that's always good i think the key to any one of these divisions is you got to have great diversity you know you have some small faster wrestlers you have some taller brute force strength type wrestlers 
and I think she's one of those. So if they can get her back and there's mutual interest, I wouldn't mind it at all. Absolutely. So, so loungers, there we go. As I said, we're going to call you loungers. Uh, if you've got an opinion on Sienna, if you'd like to see her back, uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, certainly. So let's move on to the, the main story for me of the week that came out. And uh, it's not a impact story, believe it or not. But it's in as much as it's not an impact story for me the biggest part of it is impact related. So what the hell am I talking about? Why am I trying to riddle you there, uh, Ro? I sound like the riddler, don't I, coming out with uh, some concoction to get to the point. So I'm just going to come out with it. The PWI Women's Wrestling Top 100 came out this week. And number one was Ronda Rowdy Rousey. R Rowdy Ronda Rousey? I can't even say it. Anyway, it was it was um, uh, Miss Rousey. And she was labelled as number one. Now, that in itself, I don't have a huge problem with. I don't think she is the best wrestler in the world. Far from it. I think she's possibly the biggest mainstream female wrestling star in the world. But the news item I want to talk about is the fact that Impact's very own Tessa Blanchard was not in the top 10. I don't, I don't know where she featured on it. I'm going to have a look uh, when I hand over to you in the second row. But she wasn't even featured in the top 10. Discuss, bro. <laughs> How on earth did this happen? And where do you place her in the top ten, if at all? Um, are you talking about as Tessa or Ronda? Tessa, Tessa. I, we'll talk about Ronda a little bit as well, but yeah, more more importantly, Tessa at this point, because obviously this is an impact show. Um, well, since I'm biased, I'm gonna say number one since she's our knockouts champion. But if I just said overall in the landscape of wrestling, she's at least top five. I mean, I don't know every single top female wrestler just but from the ones i've seen easily top five i mean where you would rank her in that five i mean it's debatable but easily top five so looking at ronda rousey uh is it rousey rousey i can't even say it. I, i'm not even quite sure um but do, do you think that uh, let's face it pwi it's it's a kayfabe list so we, we know that it's not actually you know someone who's looking at stats and an actual on wrestling talent but, but do you not think that, that it should have been different to this? Do you not think that it should have had impact performers in there? Well, you know, it's all from opinion. And I do think there's a certain audience and they know their audiences because, you know, I think, I forgot, it might have been a couple of years ago where they finally put AJ when AJ should have been number one back when he was in his prime during his TNA days. So there might be a little bit of a bias there. You know, the thing with Ronda Rousey from the little bit that I've seen her wrestle, I mean, she's coming along well. I'm not going to say she's horrible, but I feel like they, they're, it's kind of like she's treated with kid gloves in a sense because, you know, every match she has, oh, that was great, that was great. Like, people are afraid of being critical of her. And I don't know if because they feel like they'll be labeled as, oh, you know, you just have a problem with women wrestling or whatever the case may be. But I think it's a little bit too much too soon. Personally, if you wanted to put her in a list, if, if you're going to ask me, I'll say top 20, okay? Because I think for her coming in and um, winning the women's championship, that's a you know big accomplishment. So top 20, and it, if you ask me where in the top 20, probably in the 17 to 20 range. Okay, so going back to the list, I've just looked it up. Tessa was number 15. Okay, so t taking this out, let's take the kayfabe out of it now. So we're talking about... We're not talking about the baddest woman on the planet, those kind of things, because let's face it, Ronda, if she was up against other wrestlers, she would most probably would be someone who could legitimately beat you up. Okay, so I'm not talking about, you know, even in storyline mode, who's, who's the most popular crossover. But as a sports entertainer, and I hate using that word, but as a sports entertainer, where do you think Tessa is? Do you think she is the best in the world at the moment? Like I said, I, I still think top five. I'm trying to bring up the list right now. Is... I've got it here. So it's, it's Ronda number one, Alexa Bliss number two. The face it isn't that great a wrestler. She's smoking, but she's not that great a wrestler. Charlotte Flair, uh, Io Shira, Shire, I can't say it. Asuka, Shina Basler, Carmella, Nia Jax, Iwatani, and Kerry Singh. Then you've got Becky Lynch. And Tessa's at 15, Ali at 16. And then, you know, going further down, Bailey. Let's not facing a lot of these women on WWE each week, botching like mad. And I can't remember much of a botch in the knockout division. Um, I, I keep going about Ali not being great, but 
let's face it, it's not the botch fest that you see uh, in, in WWE there. So to me, I would genuinely, and this is not because we're running a Impact podcast here, but I would genuinely put Tessa as number one at the moment. See, that top five, to me, it just comes across as biases. They want to make sure they put WWE as well as some Japan people. Because that's really what, what it seems like. Because I see Asuka, what the hell has she done, you know? I mean, I have no problem with Charlotte. I know people don't like her, but I, I, th- I would put her in the top five. Um, Becky Lynch, I actually don't like her now. The fans, <laughs> funny as, as, as it is, the fans make me not like her. I mean, just it's just stupid, but that's another story for another day. But, I mean, I guess you could. I would put her in the top ten. Um, the other ones I'm not familiar with. Uh, the I, I'm not going to even try to pronounce her name. But it just seems like they what they want to do, they want to show oh, an Alexa Bliss uh, top 15 maybe. It just it just seems like they want to, this list is designed, they want to showcase the WWE talent as well as the Japan talent. And at the end of the day, and I think a lot of fans now, they don't take these lists too seriously because it's all opinion. You know, if you follow one particular product, you're going to think, you know, higher of these people than otherwise. Like, obviously, we cover Impact, so we're going to think of our our uh, wrestlers in a higher light because hell i <laughs> it's as funny as hell i put ty at number one probably for the wrong reasons but that's just me but i do think tessa should be in the top five i'm gonna I, one day i'm gonna try and get you to meet ty just so i can see you incoherently babble nonsense as as, as you melt into her arms anyway um yeah so, so going back to this list and I, I, i'm gonna be fair to ronda because she is actually very good and you know when she was let off the leash and to do her own promo the other week it was a very good promo but for me wrestling ability heat generating everything about tessa is absolute star And, and we often talk about you're only as good as your opponents and maybe that's where ronda i feel is most probably below where tessa is is because she hasn't had anyone good to go up against you know so look I, i'm not uh, my problem isn't with who's number one or who's number two who's number three well number two is crap but um you know whether they're, they're on this list what what bothers me is the fact that tessa is number 15 and i think that's just blatantly wrong okay um whilst we're talking about top lists um do you know who the best wrestler in the world is right now Yes, that's right. You got where I was going with this. Well done, Shane McMahon, for finally proving you're the best wrestler in the world. Uh, it's it's long overdue, and it's good to see you've put in all those years of hard graft and effort. Uh, so well done, Shane, on, on winning uh, the best in the world title at WWE Crown Jewel yesterday. Right. Uh, we're running out of time very quickly. So, so Ro, I believe there's some other things that you wanted to cover. Yeah, my main thing is just expectations for final hour next week. And I just want to zero in on one particular match, and that's the main event, um, we're assuming, which it has Killer Cross challenging Johnny Impact. Now, the past couple weeks on Impact, they've been doing a great job showcasing Killer Cross, making him be a viable threat to Johnny Impact's uh, Impact World Championship. And I just wonder, and before I get your thoughts, and listeners as well, you know, the expectations you know, I'm hoping this not isn't just kind of like a, a one go for Killer Cross because I do think down the road he has world title potential. I mean, champion, uh, championship holder potential. So I'm looking forward to seeing how this match goes, how they pretty much lay out the match. I mean, are they going to showcase his strengths? And obviously you don't want to make the world champion Johnny Impact being weak, but I, I really have high hopes for this match and I hope it goes over well. And I'm assuming... Uh, not, not some assuming I'm predicting that Johnny Impact's going to retain but I really hope this kind of just gives Killer Cross an opportunity to make his mark in the main event scene and down the road potentially grab that Impact World Championship yeah absolutely I mean I think anyone who listens to this show whether it's it's the the, the Impact Review uh, whether it's any of BQ stuff everyone knows that all five of us are on the Impact Lounge channel are regularly you know um podders what do they call us podcasters um we all love killer cross and we think that he is doing absolutely outstanding work not only does he look like a physical monster as in not only 
physically but also mentally uh, he's, he's just an incredible character so I think we'd all like to see him as a champion at some point it's just that it feels too soon for Johnny to lose it and, and that's the problem so it, this isn't an, a title match is it yeah no it is it is oh it is a title match right okay uh, so this has it well once again sorry to ask all these questions right has this been recorded or is this on the next tapings no it's uh it's been recorded so and, and that's my thing before i uh, let you finish my only criticism is i kind of wish that for this particular matchup they would have had more weeks to build towards it because it's been a two-week build and they've done great building it for the past two weeks personally i, w I wish this could have been something that they could have dragged out to homecoming because then I really you think you'd get a whole lot of promos and back and forth. And I really think it would have been solid. But uh, for the two weeks that they've done, it's it's been fantastic. I, I think that, I mean, we're all, I think we can all predict that he's most probably going to lose this somehow. But I just hope that it, it doesn't end the feud, that it's not just a, a, a one and done shot. And I know Johnny's a fighting champ. I just hope that this is a bigger storyline that, you know, for, for some reason, either he gets DQ because he won't release the cross jacket or something like that, you know, so that it can continue the feud further down the line. I mean, this has the potential to be, if Homecoming is a pay-per-view, which I think it is, this has a potential to be the main event, something that you could build a main event on, even more so than, than Aries and Impact was. Uh, because you put... Let's face it, Killer Cross is money, isn't he? He's absolute money. So, uh, yeah, listeners, let us know what you think. Uh, whether you think that they are going to put the belt on Killer Cross anytime soon, or whether you think this is a one and done deal. We also want to hear your thoughts on Tessa Blanchard. Um, and uh, obviously, don't forget to follow us on Twitter, give us a thumbs up on this article, and to retweet anything that you see with get billy on hashtag get billy on we want to get billy corgan on the show in the future anything else you want to add bro before we finish up today no nah, that pretty much covers the week uh you just guys continue to drop your comments um we'll try to answer as many as we can and um yeah that's pretty much it on my end another thing folks just one final one you know we always tell you to hit the subscribe those kind of things if you are on social media or those kind of uh, or, uh, you know so you see us on on twitter or on facebook or whatever make sure you give us a, a share as well you know it's always great to get out to to bigger audiences those kind of things also set yourself a challenge that that uh, you get some new blood on the show so that you're not always answering the the trivia question first uh, we'll make them tougher and bigger if uh, if we can get up to a regular thousand listeners of the show so thank you all for tuning in uh, we'll be back next week Good day to you, Ro. Good day to you, Adam. <laughs>